Hello and welcome to the Sean Kelly on Movies podcast. And this is the first of uh, four interviews I conducted at the uh, Fantasia Film Festival. I just came back from a week in Montreal and I uh, conducted a number of interviews with the filmmakers. And um, the uh, first interview I have is actually the uh, most recent, and um, that is with. Uh, director Rai Levy and uh, professional wrestlers Sunny Kiss and Pero about the documentary Out in the Ring, which had its uh, Fantasia screening last night. And it was a very good conversation, so I'll get right to it. I guess I um, started with um, Rai. Um, what inspired you to make this documentary? <laughs> No, Out in the Ring came out came from my uh, love of uh, Calgary Stampede Wrestling in the 1980s. It was my first experience with pro wrestling, and uh, fandom, of course, started back then. And when the time came to create a feature film about pro wrestling, I decided um, I was going to tell it um, wrestling through a queer lens. And so, um, going through a queer lens, um, I was able to kind of explore, you know, gender, uh, sexuality, um, representation homophobia and so much and uh, that's what kind of the genesis for Out in the Ring was and then slowly but surely I would find these amazing performers like Sunny Kiss and Mike per Perot and all these other people and it became kind of a, a journey to build a, um, a history some of it hidden and uh, some of it um, slowly but surely out and uh, public and uh, embracing everything. So the um documentary actually points out that there was always like a certain homoerotic element to pro wrestling but there's like been a cognitive dissonance to it so uh, why would you say that well I guess you know I think a lot of people as I think uh, Scott Sergeant Dixon McEwen says in the film so eloquently you know a lot of people are in denial of what's right in front of them and uh, clearly you know we see you know I think we can look now yeah. that um, as he says the road warriors are a leather man's fantasy that's a Tom of Finland representation mm -hmm. uh, and there's uh, a lot of people in their underwear uh, <laughs> dance you know around wrestling around and you know there are things you know like people ripping each other's clothes off um, you know we, we use a clip of uh, uh, Scott Steiner basically stripping down um, I believe it's Scott Steiner in that scene stripping down Triple H into his underwear uh, in the ring. So there's all these things that we can look back that, you know, obviously are very homoerotic in representation, both male and female. And uh, I think, you know, I think people just, you know, don't, you know, for a segment of people, they don't see what's in front of them. I think for those um, who are part of the community, um, clearly we're able to see what's going on. And I think uh, this new generation of uh, amazing performers is able to uh, now be themselves in that representation. It's not just a bunch of straight uh, heterosexual people, um, you know, portraying uh, these images. So, uh, okay, so for um, Sunny Kiss, um, so um, you are actually one of the um, early uh, signees to AEW as kind of a sign of that company's um, inclusivity. So, um, how do you feel AEW has been when it comes to LGBTQ representation? Uh, AEW like mission was always to have a product that was very inclusive, have tons of people from all walks of life. Uh, I, I feel like as far as you know that mission to have that diversity, I feel like we've definitely like, accomplished that for sure. Like there's there's not just that token one. It's now we have five, six, seven of us on the roster from referees to workers, and uh, yeah, no, it's an amazing thing for sure. And uh, for a Pero, sorry, I didn't have the question prepared, but like um, in um, the documentary, um, your story is actually one of the more harrowing because you mentioned actually being suicidal in the closet. So could you talk a bit about that? Well, unfortunately, suicide, the thought of suicide is a lot in our community, especially because we are taught that we're not supposed to be gay and be authentically who we are. So I thought growing up, especially seeing nobody like me, I thought I was the only one to exist because I, I don't get closer for you. Uh, I grew up not seeing any representation of me on television and sports or anything because predominantly you have to remember there is no gay writers. There's straight writers that write for gay people. And I grew up not thinking anybody was like me. 
So you become very lonely and you think to yourself that unfortunately that you're the only one and that led to a lot of thoughts that I was gonna let people down if I was gay so I became very lonely and I didn't know how to tell anybody and I decided to make the decision and I'm happy that I didn't go through with it because shortly after I met the love of my life and I ended up nine years later I married to him so um, Suicide is not the answer, and sometimes you have to meet everything face off. So, um, uh, we're talking about, about um, the representation of LGBTQ in WWE, which is a big point in the film that it's nev not that good. <laughs> so, do you think um, WWE can ever truly be inclusive, or will be like um, Darren Young and just have a gay wrestler for PR purposes? Well, I think the Darren Young story is kind of an interesting thing because Darren came out, Darren came out on the roster um, while he was already there in TMZ, and uh, they had to kind of just address it, um, and they addressed it poorly, and they dealt with him poorly, and they made statements like Darren Young, the wrestler, is not gay. Fred Rosser is gay, and as the amazing Razor Clark says in the film. Um, you know, the only person who should decide who gets to separate what from what is that individual. So any of those wrestlers, there should be no reason that a corporate entity should be able to tell you, you have to be straight on camera and you can be gay on camera and straight um, in your regular life. It's not, you know, it's not fair, first off, and it's not possible really in a way because all elements of yourself should are facets of who you are. And so if you're out, you're out. And, you know, nobody's saying that it has to be a love story and that, you know, the performers have to fall in love with each other or sexualize. But people being themselves and being honest and open is what makes them work. And it makes those characters perform in, you know, in the best way possible. And WWE's, you know, representation at this point is, you know, it fluctuated. Um, and it's... Right now, I mean, there's maybe five people who are out on the roster, but they're not, they're not promoted. I mean, we haven't seen Shayna Baszler on TV in WWE for, for I almost say a month to two months now, and uh, and then even then, we're not seeing you know as many people. It, you know, whereas you know in other you know, other organizations, even at AEW, I mean, there's work that needs to be done there in terms of. Uh, elevating uh, the talent and offering, you know, giving those opportunities and seeing representation. Yeah, actually, I'll do that for a follow-up because, so um, for um, Sunny is like um, most of uh, Sunny Kiss's matches in AEW has been on like AEW Dark instead of Dynamite. So are you like disappointed not to be on TV as often as you would hope? Oh, well, of course. I mean, um, <laughs> why is in the spot? Um, yeah, no, uh, I, de I definitely think about it. You know, I got into wrestling because I wanted to be featured in some sort of way, um, you know, in it. And um, yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, it's an interesting situation because, you know, you, you just, you think about it in, in ways that you're like, is it me? Is it me? Um, those are, we have a stacked roster. There's hun over a hundred something people on the roster. <laughs> Um, and uh, we're all, there's a lot of different LGBTQ workers that are being dealt with differently, so I want to say that to add to what you were saying. Um, you know, everyone's having their own different experiences, and we don't want to speak for everybody. But um, it, I'll say it's definitely been challenging, for sure. Um, but I'm just going to keep going, you know, that's the only, the only thing I can do. So, yeah, I'm here to say. Can I add something yeah, yeah, to that conversation? We have a unfortunately and I'm going to be truthful we have a huge problem in wrestling mm -hmm. uh, we have a huge problem and it's not just wrestling because wrestling mimics life mm -hmm. and right now we have a large hatred towards the LGBTQ community whether it was a pandemic or what happened but we have this big conservative movement where all of a sudden religion and all that play an effect into what is shown on television also I don't understand why we have to be treated separately from our straight counterparts. Whereas they could be straight on television, that's already inherent that they could have a love interest, they could cheat on their husband, they could do whatever they want on television, on camera, and have that storyline. But any, we're not allowed to address any storyline to us. And we're, we're right, at, the problem is I call it the, unfortunately, the token gay stage, where they want us on the roster, 
but they don't know how to use us because nobody's ever, they don't know anything about us because they never asked. We don't have gay story writers. We do not, we do not have anybody to address our issues or give, they don't even ask us for our ideas of how can we address this and coming off non-homophobic. Because the biggest fear now, unfortunately, with all of television, is the generation above us that is writing the television is afraid of the cancel culture. So they're afraid that anything they do, they're gonna get canceled for it. So rather than trying it, because wrestling used to be what was the forward thinking. You, you, you know, we mimic life and we did things before other people. So you, it, it like Star Trek. Star Trek had everybody from everywhere shape of life. And it, it, when it happened, people were like, oh my God, that could never happen. But slowly over time, people became, okay, mm -hmm. I see this. Because we are what children, the generation coming up watching television now are okay with LGBTQ. They're okay. They understand clothes don't have a gender that, but we're still stuck in this over-masculated era of, oh, this has to be this way. Nobody wants to take a risk. Nobody wants to put a, a new idea. Wrestling, unfortunately, right now is stale. I don't want to see another 90s, 98 wrestler out there. I unfortunately don't. I, I love Ric Flair. I love his matches. I don't want to see the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, because the last one to me was in the wrestling ring with Shawn Michaels. That to me is one of those things where there's a lot of older wrestlers taking away right now from younger wrestlers with different ideas. And that's what wrestling used to be about. It used to be pushing the boundaries, showing where we can go. But right now we're stuck in this, let's redo something we've done over and over and over again. And they don't understand why viewers in this generation that don't tune into TV because they don't have cable, that watch it on television are watching the sunny kisses on a, a dark and and sometimes i do think sunny's on dark because sunny gets views people watch that and they have no idea how to generate that with the, all other people on that roster on that show <laughs> and that's just my personal opinion but i know for me right now what i've learned from the straight community is that they love to put things in boxes and it has to fit in that box. And if it doesn't fit in the box, it makes them uncomfortable. And so explaining to them that I'm a, a masculine gay man and then there's feminine gay and then there's this gay and then there's there's trans and trans then there's, well, there's trans and they don't understand that. But we understand that. The younger generation understands that. A whole group of people, a, a generation of fans that feel for guys we do a show called Big Gay Brunch. All LGBTQ fans living their best life. That's what wrestling's about. Showing that you're not forgotten. RuPaul's Drag Race is one of the most watched shows, not by gay people, by straight people. So they're interested. Fans are interested. It's just the people running it right now are afraid to take the chance because they're so afraid to make a misstep. And I will say this, that was the one good thing Vince did in the past before the older generations, is he took risks. There's nobody, there's no promoter out there taking risks. In fact, they're just redoing WWE stuff with WWE guys. So that's that's my opinion on wrestling right now. Whether it's wrong or right, we're all tight. Like, that's, you know, it is. But unfortunately, like, we're at this period now where they're... There's more of us. There's not just Sonny. It's not just me. It's not just Effie. It's not just Dark Sheik. It's not just Danny. There's so many young LGBTQ wrestlers that are so talented. It's so gifted that they're they're a wrestler. It's not. I'm like, what? Why do we have to separate them being straight and us being gay when they can do whatever they want, but we can't speak up and just say, hey, can we just try this? see what happens and if it doesn't work it doesn't work that's okay because you try a lot of stuff with your our straight counterparts that don't work at all and are abandoned immediately but why can't we at least try what's what's my question is to our straight counterpart what is it going to hurt what are you going to lose what is what is three weeks of television going to hurt because you do it every every other week with other other people What's the difference? And that's my question right now.
And I mean, to add to that point, I mean, you talked about, you know, again, Sunny getting views online, and that might be a reason. The truth is, is that most people who are consuming wrestling are consuming it online. They don't have cable. They're not watching TV tapings. I'm certainly not watching Raw and SmackDown uh, on on Monday night because one, it's three hours of a, of talking mostly, and we don't get enough wrestling. I'm a wrestling fan. I'm not a I'm not a speech fan. I don't need the the best of WWE promos volume, you know, whatever. Uh, I want to watch wrestling. So people are turning to Fight TV and IWTV to consume wrestling, and they're consuming dark. And they're watching it, and they're watching a lot of the uh, matches are being put online instantly after the TV shows. So, again, you know, the way fans are consuming wrestling is is, is different. And and the truth is, is that the, the TV model is antiquated. And I wonder how much of it, again, it's driven by corporations. It's driven by, especially WWE, driven by a publicly traded company. It's, it's dr- dr- driven by, um, you know... By sales of stocks and network, you know, network numbers, and again, you know, it's you know, wrestling has has to evolve with the times and the access to uh, these amazing performers like Mike and Sonny <clears throat> has got to happen through that, and hopefully, they'll be able to lead the charge to to change it, and then at some point, maybe we'll actually get some representation behind the scenes. That is going to advocate for those performers and write for them and collaborate with the performers themselves, which is essentially what needs to happen. Okay, I think that's a good point to end on. <laughs> the Sean Carolina Movies Podcast is a production of SKRMovies.com. Episodes and show notes can be found at SKRMoviesPodcast.ca or SKRMoviesSubstack.com. And you subscribe to us via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and where else podcasts are hosted. Support us by becoming a paid subscriber at skrmovies.substack.com.